Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps and my office. Today we are making another soap for the Homestead Collection. The Homestead Collection is inspired by all things farmy, kind of cottagey, milking cows, collecting berries, picking wild flowers, baking bread, you get the vibe. And boy do I have a soap for all you millennials out there. About two years ago I made a soap called Avocado toast and it was easily one of my most requested to remake that year and in 2020 so I was like well let's do it. I feel like the cottage slash homesteading and farming lifestyle is something very appealing to my age group. I don't know why. <laughs> Escapism <laughs> maybe. And speaking of escapism, today's video is sponsored by Acorn TV, the company that can help you escape across the pond into the land of British television without ever having to leave your comfy couch. It's winter where I am right now in Poetry, Texas. In fact, it's about to snow in Texas. And my old bones are not used to it. I can tell you this cardigan isn't doing it for me. All I want to do is get under a blanket and watch some really good TV. Luckily, Acorn TV can help me with that. Acorn TV is loaded with thousands of hours of binge-worthy content and there's always something new to watch. Acorn TV is also commercial free, which is highly appreciated and only $5.99 a month. So I watch Acorn TV with Caleb at night via the Roku, which makes it super, super easy, but you can also watch it via Google Chromecast and Amazon Fire TV, and you can download the app on both Apple and Android devices. So basically you can access it anywhere on anything. And if you're a fan of quirky British comedy, then the other one is a must watch. It follows two sisters from very different worlds who had no idea the other existed until their father drops dead. And for you Downton Abbey fans out there, the other one features a hilarious performance from beloved Siobhan Finneran. I'm so excited because I just looked this morning and Acorn now has some Agatha Christie mysteries on it, which I read religiously in high school. They were some of the only mystery books that I could read without being completely freaked out. So I know what my plans are tonight. <laughs> so escape to Britain and beyond without ever leaving the warmth of your couch this winter. You can try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and using the code ROYAL soaps. That's acorn.tv and use the promo code royalty soaps for a 30 day free trial. Thank you so much to Acorn TV for sponsoring today's video. And now without further ado, let's make every millennial's favorite snack an avocado toast in the form of soap. I'm now realizing you can totally see my face in the reflection of the oils. So if I'm making like ridiculous faces like mm -hmm, you can see all of that. Good to know. <laughs> we begin, of course, by pouring our lye water solution into our oils and stick blending until just past emulsion. Okay, and now I'm going to split the batch into these two buckets. And I'll have to scrapey scrapey my containy because we won't be coming back to this large square containy ever. Uh, We're done with it forever. Okay, well, maybe not forever, but for this soap, forever. Scrapey scrapey. Let me tell you guys what is absolutely unreal. Avocado toast, but on these little sandwich thins made with cauliflower. Caleb just bought these for me. He was trying to help me eat healthier, bless his heart. And I tell you what, that is the most delicious savory breakfast ever. I just put, if you like a tomato, put a tomato on there. If you don't, stay away. Um, <laughs> put a tomato on there, a little salt and pepper. Oh, delicious and so filling. Now I'm going to remove one of these containies. 
And we're gonna work with this one right here. The first thing that I'm going to do is add in our color blend. This is brown oxide mixed with mocha brown, which I believe is from Nurture. All right, now I'm gonna pour in our fragrance oil and kaolin clay blend. The fragrance I'm using today is green tea. This is from Nature's Garden. This is the same fragrance we used for our sushi soap whenever we did the Studio Ghibli month. And now I'm just gonna blend this up real quick. I've got a little extra time, so I'm gonna whippity wipeity down this stick blender. Oh yeah, and by the way, green tea, also delicious. I had matcha the other day and for the first time in like a really long time because I got a new tea kettle and um, so good. Highly recommend if you're a tea lover. Um, and then into this, we are now going to pour some oatmeal, a lot of oatmeal, about 12 ounces of old fashioned oats. And I'm just gonna stir this in. The original soap had apricot seed powder in it, but I've taken that out because I felt like it was a little bit too exfoliating. Um, if there's oatmeal in a soap, that's, that's gonna do plenty all by itself. So that's that's how I'm gonna keep it. All right, let's go ahead and wipe this off right here. And this is supposed to represent like a pumpernickel bread or what is that guy, Joe? Joe's bread? Why can't I remember anything? <laughs> Also, Trader Joe's, never been, not once. I hear all these bougie influencers that are like vegans or whatever who are like, Trader Joe's, must goes. And I've never been there and the closest one to me is 45 minutes away. So tell me if it's worth a trip. Now basically all I have to do for this next bit is dump it into the mold. And I do say dump because it's really, really runny. I forgot that this fragrance oil like absolutely liquefies your soap, you honestly have to mix it up so well after adding the fragrance, cause you can see it's it's like soup. Just gonna scrapey scrapey this containy. We won't be using it again. Okay guys, time for the next layer. So I'm gonna pour in this custom green blend that I made using Three olive martini and lettuce entertain you. The lettuce in there sort of brightens up the green a little bit. And then of course the three olive martini makes it this nice moody avocado color. I know avocados are typically very, very light in color, but I did have a color palette that I'm trying to stick with. So that's why I picked this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in that fragrance oil blend here and mix. Okay guys, so I'm gonna begin by ladling this green over the brown. The brown is still really runny. I wish I had mixed it for longer. I just forgot how this fragrance oil was, but that's okay. We'll go very, very slowly and hopefully everything will stay relatively flat. If not, no big deal, but you know me. I like to keep those layers as flat as possible by breaking the fall with a spatula if possible. After about four hours of soap making, I get the most strange, like it is the strangest amount of peckish. I just wanna eat everything. Carrots, uh, potatoes, peas and tomatoes. It, it really doesn't matter and it's not necessarily anything sweet or bad for me. I'm just starving, I, I don't know, soap making, a workout. You're welcome. Try cold process soap making. The workout of your dreams. <laughs> All right, scrapey scrapey, my little containy here. I'm gonna tap everything down and then we have to wait for this to set up quite a bit because I will actually be texturing the top with 
a very fine instrument known as a dingle hopper, but I have to let this all set up first. Okay guys, so I'm going to take my fork here and I'm just going to gently scrape across the top. It's still a little runny, but it's really not that big a deal. This does not have to be perfect. The only reason I'm doing it is to give it a little interest on the top and some texture. So I have an embed going on the top of this bar and I have a few little like drizzly bits and yeah, so I'm not really worried about this being like perfectly, perfectly forked. <laughs> All right, time to put some egg whites on top of this soap. That's right, egg whites. I'm going to pour it right here on the side and then I'll do it on the other side and then I'll do the middle. It's just that avocado toast is so good with a fried egg on top. I couldn't leave it out. Plus also it made for a really cute design. In and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Just going in a circle down the side of these middle bars, just like so. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to this side and do the same thing. I need to make sure that I'll have enough white to go around. Cool. <laughs> and now I have to do the hard thing. I have to put this horribly old <laughs> crooked grid on here and try to guess where everything is supposed to go. And by everything, I mean these little egg yolks that my sister Shelly made. We color matched them to some farm fresh eggs. My mom has chickens, so that made it really easy. We're gonna put a little egg here in the little bit of the middle of the egg white, just like that. And I'll put some salt and pepper on it. And I'm putting all the middle ones on first because this is the hardest one to do. <laughs> so my mom has had chickens for years and you can really taste the difference. If you've never had farm fresh eggs before, let me tell you, they are very different from store-bought eggs. They're a lot more creamy and a lot more flavorful. They're quite good. And even though I do not like chickens, I don't like them. I never have. Uh, I think they smell and I don't like that they poop all over the place. That being said, there is no denying that in my personal opinion, they are worth it because the eggs are so much better. My mom loves those hens. They are so spoiled and we don't keep a rooster. So they're all quite happy. At one point we had a bantam rooster, which if you don't know anything about chickens, which I don't blame you if you don't, <laughs> there's no reason to know anything about them for most people. Bantams are a small breed and the roosters are typically known for being pretty cocky and for just being disagreeable when it came to the hens and to other people messing with hens. However, my mom's bantam was the sweetest little rooster boy. He would sit on your hand and nibble little treats out of it. I mean, he was so cute, which is exceedingly rare for that breed. And he lived a pretty good long time too. His name was Foghorn. We also had another Bantam rooster and I'm gonna have to ask her the name of it after I get done with this video because I can never remember his name. He was hated. He was so mean to Foghorn. He was mean to everybody. He scratched my little sister's eye. Uh, yeah, he, he was not treasured or favored. Uh, and that is why I do not remember his name. <laughs> but my mom, for Caleb's Christmas present, she told me, now she bought a lot of Christmas presents this year. It was a difficult year um, for basically the world. <laughs> <laughs> in 2020. Um, so she bought a lot of Christmas presents. And let me tell you, she told me weeks in advance that Caleb's Christmas present was her favorite Christmas present that she had bought and that she couldn't wait to give it to him. And I had no idea what she could have possibly bought him because let me tell you, Caleb's kind of hard to buy for. He's a really content person which makes it hard to give him gifts because he doesn't want or need anything. And how dare I drop it like that? That is just, 
What a crime. I'm also pretty sure that she saved his gift to almost last. I did it again. What is wrong with me? It's because I'm so frustrated at this story. You'll see why. <laughs> I'm not actually that frustrated, kind of. Um, she bought Caleb guineas. Now, I don't know if you've ever had the displeasure of owning a guinea or being around a guinea hen. They have them in Africa, I know that, uh, and they have them here in the countryside of Texas. If you are an OG royalty soap viewer, and I mean old. You may remember the sound of guinea hens in the background when I lived at my parents' house, and they finally ran out of them like a year and a half or so ago. Let me remove this, and we're going to put some pepper on there. <laughs> Not real pepper, mind you, just some blueberry seeds. They look like pepper, but... Uh, aren't so spicy. Caleb had been talking about getting guineas because they eat snakes. He's a little worried about snakes come summertime. Uh, guineas eat snakes. They also eat a variety of other pests, but let me tell you the downside to them. <laughs> loud oh my gosh so loud horribly obnoxious birds also they look like prehistoric they look like dinosaurs they're hideous anyways i'm salty about it i really went on a rant i will also say guinea eggs very tasty very creamy very nice would you just look at it it's so, so nice. Well, there you go. There's my story about guineas and chickens and farm fresh eggs. All, all of that inspired by the top of this avocado toast in the Homestead collection. That's why I felt it was so perfect. You got the eggs, you got the avocados, you got the fresh made bread on the bottom. It's a whole, it's a whole package deal. So I'll be back in 18 to 24 hours and we will split the slab into loaves, cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break. You guys, look. <laughs> Isn't that fun? The little egglings are so cute. You know what? Let me turn this around so that I can minimize the amount of eggs that get chopped up. All right. Press down. Pull one out of the middle, and this is what it looks like on the inside. So we've got our little avocado top. We've got our little like pumpernickel bread or whatever that healthy bread is that I still don't remember the name of, even the next day <laughs> on the bottom. And then we've got our little egg with our pepper on top. And I just, I can't tell you how much I love it. It smells so good. I don't know why, it does smell kind of breakfasty. I, I, I really don't know why. I, I normally feel like green tea has a very like spa smell to it. So I don't know if that's because it's mixed with oatmeal that it smells this way, but it just has this really like fresh spring breakfast smell to it. Really happy with these. That color is perfect. And the question of the day is, do you like avocados? Not avocado toast, just avocados. I used to despise them and I didn't like guacamole either. Like there was something about it, just the texture was off to me. I don't know when I started developing a taste for it. I feel like it was when I was pregnant with Lily. But before that, you couldn't get me to touch the stuff. But who cares what I think? I want to know what you think. Tell me down in the comments section below. Are you a fellow avocado convert? Or do you still hate the guts out of them? Or have you always loved them? It's important. I need to know.
hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Are you excited about the avocado toast soap? Are there other millennial things I absolutely have to make? A millennial pink soap, maybe? I'm all inspired to do 90s things and nostalgia things because of the Slumber Party collection. I'm still thinking about it. So if you have any suggestions for other millennial things I need to make, leave them down in the comments below. Who knows, maybe I'll make a soap later on for the summertime. Inspired by an idea you share down below. Again, thank you to Acorn TV for sponsoring today's video. You guys can go to acorn.tv and use the code royalty soaps to get a 30-day free trial. Definitely check it out. It's one of mine and Caleb's favorite things to do and I also feel very fancy when I watch Acorn TV. Now you be sure to do something fun for yourself today, whether that's making a fire in a fireplace. Do you have a fireplace at home? Is that an unusual thing to have? It's now starting to occur to me that maybe that's an unusual thing to have. Or making yourself a cup of hot cocoa with a little bit of avocado toast. That sounds like a gross combo. Or maybe getting a savory piece of toast with an avocado spread and some hot green tea. I don't care what you do, just be sure to do something fun for yourself today. That's the whole point. I know it's wintry right now. It's very, very cold where most of us live, but I'm gonna give you guys some things to look forward to. Like I said, I was gonna do in one of the videos earlier this month. Number one, everything is going to be on sale because Valentine's Day is over. So if you need to get some candy, 50% off. Also, March is just around the corner and won't we all be so grateful when everything starts to pop up out of the earth and all the bulbs start coming and tulips and daffodils, that's right around the corner. Hold on, it will be so much sweeter because we have waited so long. See, there's always something to be glad about. Anyway, have an absolutely magical day. I will see you guys very soon for another video. And until then, have an absolutely royal day. And bye for now. Let's use the phone, ready? Yeah.